What is up everyone and welcome to my Giants Foundry Guide. The only requirements you need to participate in this minigame is the completion of the Sleeping Giants quest. Guide to which will be in the top right corner now. The only items you would need is the bars you're going to use for smithing, although I do recommend bringing weight reducing gear and the ice gloves. So full graceful or the arty cloak or the boots of lightness and the ice gloves. You don't need the ice gloves. But if you want to get those right now, there is a guide on the top right corner for the ice gloves. Again, you do not need the ice gloves. I'll be showing you how to do this without the ice gloves. Once you have the ice gloves, however, and you've gotten the glove, the smithing gloves from this mini game, you can actually combine the ice gloves and the smithing gloves to make the smithing gloves imbued, which have the same effect as both gloves combined. This mini game is located over in Al Qarid, just southeast of the Akarid Palace. Just head down from the Lumbridge Gates, south, follow the path, pass through these gates south of the PvP arena, and you should be able to follow the bridge around over to the Foundry area. Another way of getting here would be to go to Grouping and select uh, Giant's Foundry and then click Teleport. Once you're here, go ahead and head inside. Once you're inside, you see there is a bank to the east you can use whenever you want. To the west, you see a polishing wheel, a grinding stone, and a trip hammer. To the north, you find a tree form storage, which means you can just put up your sword there if you want to just take a break for a minute and you don't want to finish that sword. Next to that, you will find a lava pool, and between the polishing stones and the grinding stones, you find a waterfall. If you have room light, I recommend leaving the shift button pressed and changing the swap click left click to quench instead of cool in the waterfall and swap left click from heat to dunk in the lava pool. This will make things go faster. If you do not have room light or if you're on mobile, you can just right click dunk instead. It's not that big a difference. It's just a little bit of quality of life. After completing the quest, you want to go ahead and commission from Kovac and he'll tell you what kind of sword you have to make. Click on the mold and you can set up the sword. This is not difficult at all. All you have to do is just choose whichever one gives you the most amount of points. For example, for me, this is narrow and light, 8 and 10. That's 18, that's better than anything else I have. It's really no brainer, just click the bigger number. Once you've set up your sword, head up to the bank and pull your bars. Now there are two different things you can use for this. You can use items or you can use bars. I highly recommend using items, especially if you're an Iron Man, because you get more XP out of each bar. However, for a five cost smithing item, you will only get four bars of use when you use them in the Crucible. For example, a Mithril Play Body costs five bars to make. But when using the Crucible, it only uses up four bars. An Adamant Warhammer costs three bars to make, but when using the Crucible, it only counts as two bars. Another thing is I highly recommend, and I mean pretty much you need to use two different bars to do this. Otherwise your experience is cut by a lot. There's actually a math equation you can use to figure out how much experience you get by combining two different sets of items but i didn't drop out of college to do math now so throwing out the window a combination of adamant and rune will always give you more experience and more points than just rune so I highly recommend you use a combination of two to fill the crucible you need a total of 28 bars or the items that come up to 28 bars for example seven warhammers is 14 bars it doesn't take 14 bars to make, but again, these count as two bars instead of three. Three plate bodies and one mithril legs count as 14 mithril bars. So I'll have 14 mithril bars and 14 adamant bars for the best alchemy experience. For Iron Man, you can also do 12 adamant and 16 mithril. You just take a bit of a reduction in experience and points, but it's not enough to matter and you get to save more of your more expensive materials. Once you have everything you need, Use them on the crucible. And now with both your hands empty, go ahead and pour it and pick it up at the bottom if you have the ice gloves. Head down and pick it up. 
If you do not have ice gloves, head down west over to the buckets, take one bucket, use it at the waterfall, and then use the bucket of water on the mold. Now you can pick up the mold. Now you have this little mini game interface. The red means the hammer, the tipping hammer. The green means the polishing stone and the yellow means the grinding stone. This is not time. You can take as long as you want. This may be different for you depending on the difficulty of the item you're crafting. It's a lot easier or a lot harder. This is the quality of your item. The quality will affect how much experience and points you get when the item is finished. This is the heat of the item or how hot it is at the moment. Red being very hot, yellow being medium, and green being low. The reason these icons are different colors is because this is the temperature the item has to be. For example, my tipping hammer is red, so I have to have this little arrow on the red icon in order to start using the tipping hammer, otherwise it would affect my quality. The tipping hammer and the polishing wheel make the heat go down, while the grinding stone makes the heat go up. So keep in mind, yellow starts from left to right, and red and green start from right to left. Right now, I need to lower the temperature of my sword so I can be able to use it at the hammer. So I use, I quench it in the waterfall and it goes down faster. Now I can use the tripping hammer. The tripping hammer will make your temperature go down. So keep an eye on it. Make sure you do not keep using the hammer after you reach past the red mark. As well as make sure you don't keep using the hammer once you reach the next phase. Once it's low, I, I dunk it in the lava, I increase the temperature so I can keep using the hammer. This will be different for everybody, just keep looking at it. Every once in a while you see this yellow bar going around your interface, that means just click the activity you're doing already and you'll get a bonus to your progress. All you have to do is keep following the steps it shows you at the top and make sure your temperature matches up with your activity. Remember that the grinding stone increases your temperature, so you want to start from left to right rather than the green and red, which you want to start from right to left. I messed that up. I hit a grinding stone because I was talking and I lost quality of my sword. So this is going to affect my final points as well as my final experience. This is probably why people normally voice over the guides, but I fucking hate scripts, so fuck it. The bottom bar is different for everybody, so you have to adapt as you get the bar. It changes every time you get a different sword. Once your sword is completed, that means the bottom bar is gray. You just hand it in to Kovac and he'll give you points, experience, and gold depending on the quality of your sword. And that is your first sword made. You can receive another commission or you can just go to the shop of Kovac and you see everything he has to offer. I no longer have them, but you should be able to buy some of the pieces for the mold. I highly recommend you buy those because they will increase both your experience and points per hour. They're very good to have. I have actually bought all of them, which is why you can't see them down here. In your screen, you should be able to see them. The rest of the items are the double cannonball mold, which lets you craft cannonballs twice as fast. Kovac Scrog, which increases your smithing level by four. The smithing catalyst, which gives you double the experience of the bar that you're making, as well as reduces the cost of the coal that you need to use to make the bar by half. An ore pack, which is just a bag of 30 ore a smithing tunic, smithing trousers, smithing boots, and smithing gloves. Each piece has a 20% chance of increasing the speed it takes you to smith an item in an anvil by 20%. The full set together guarantees a 100% chance that you smith items in the anvil a lot faster. And a colossal sword. I love this sword because it increases the damage you do depending on the size of the monster. It is an insane sword and it's extremely underrated. I've done pest control with this sword 
and at level 60 strength and attack, I can hit 31s on the portal. So this is a very underrated sword. People don't seem to really know about it. It's an insane sword. Try it out. And that is all you need to know about the Giant's Foundry. I hope this guide helps you guys. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Wait, before you click off the video, did you know I have a Discord where you can ask questions and request videos? Links in the description below.